the shooting range. In this episode, Pages of History, how the Germans studied captured T-34s, triathlon, best ATGM carriers, and metal beasts, the Soviet rocket-powered fighter. Today, we'll tell you about the new event machine that's about to become available to the players. You'll learn how to get it very soon, but right now, we can already give all the details about it. Please welcome the Soviet rocket-powered fighter interceptor, the BI. During the early 1940s, aviation engineers received some new promising engine units with climb rates way higher than the best piston engines of the time. May 1942 saw the maiden flight of the fighter with a simple name, BI, which could be attributed to either the initials of its creators, Isaev Berezhniak, or to its description, Blizhny Istrebitel, Russian for short-range fighter. This machine is propelled by liquid rocket engine installed in the tail. The fuel for it is found in self-sealing tanks all over the fuselage. As for weaponry, the BI has two 20mm guns with an ammo capacity of only 90 rounds. All this makes the application of the fighter very limited, since its ammo is scarce and the fuel lasts only less than two minutes. Even if you head to the enemy right away, you'll barely have enough time to reach them, and none at all to make it back. So how do you use it? At the beginning of the battle, gain speed in horizontal flight until it's around 600 kph, and then gain altitude flying 30 degrees up. By the time you climb to 6 kilometers, you will have enough fuel for 30 seconds of flight and a speed around 800 kph. Now you want to save your precious fuel, so reduce thrust to 15 or 16 percent and level your aircraft. With the altitude advantage on your side, it's time to attack. Most enemy planes will be much slower and lower, and that's exactly what we'll use. Reduce your thrust even more before attacking and slow down the aircraft to avoid losing control of your elevators during the dive. You'll need to wait until you're sure to hit the target before shooting. Since your ammo is limited to 45 rounds per gun and you can't waste it on long bursts, what's left of your fuel after the attack needs to be spent on regaining altitude. Don't be afraid of finding yourself with an empty tank far from the airfield. This aircraft has outstanding aerodynamics and keeps the speed well, so you can make it back home even with zero fuel, providing you've gained enough altitude. As for landing, you only have one attempt, <laughs> of course. Don't expect to add some thrust and make a go-round. In mixed battles, the aircraft will be useful for its designated purpose, intercepting enemy bombers and attack aircraft. With the right attitude, this aircraft can patrol at minimum thrust level and wait for the enemy aircraft long enough. This fighter is unsuitable for attacking ground targets, so it has no suspended armament and your ammo won't last for more than a couple of attacks. In our next episode, we'll tell you about another, even more curious event vehicle, and a separate video about the event itself is coming as well. Meanwhile, it's time for our traditional Pages of History. During the first weeks of the invasion of the USSR, Germany paid little attention to the Soviet vehicles left behind. But by the winter of 1941, the Blitzkrieg had failed. 
The Germans got bogged down near Moscow. That's when they decided they had some time to study the newest Soviet tanks. What they found was that the German vehicles had inferior armor and armament compared to the T-34. Something had to be done urgently, so in mid-November 1941, a group of specialists from the Panzer Commission teamed up with the representatives of the leading commercial companies and set off towards the front line, not very far from Moscow. On arrival, they conducted a series of tests, but the details from their reports are considered lost today. It would have been a blank spot in history, but for the changes introduced by the Germans into their own new tanks after they had studied the Soviet machines. First of all, they had cancelled all programs for the 20-ton tanks that they had been going to replace the Panzer III and IV with. Instead, they launched the 30-ton projects, the future Panthers. Second, they reviewed their approach to tank armor. The Germans had known about sloped armor before, of course, but only used it on armored cars. And now they had a tank with projectile-resistant armor to study. Mann Company prepared a new hull by late November, which was later used to design the new Panther. Another remarkable feature of the early T-34s was their turret. Unlike the German tanks, it had a longer shape with a niche in the rear, a very compact gun mantlet, and a single cast frontal plate. These solutions were used by the Krupp company in developing the turret for the future King Tiger. The ammo was moved to the turret rear, while the narrow front reduced weight. However, creating curved shapes turned out to be tricky. Around half of the details cracked during the casting. That's why the engineers decided to simplify the turret, increasing the armor as well. Dame Lebens was another company influenced by the design of the T-34. The Puma and the Panther Aus F machines received a narrow front and a compact gun mantlet. You can definitely say that the Germans learnt a lot from the Trophy T-34s, which is best seen in their medium tanks. This influence shouldn't be overestimated, though. What the Germans did was basically take a good look at the early model, compile a list of what could be improved, and develop some of the ideas their own way. And that was fair enough since what they had was an early modification of the Soviet tank, bound to undergo a long chain of improvements. Uh, but that's the story for another time. A little while ago, we promised you in the comments to have a competition among the best ATGM carrying machines. Well, here we go. Please welcome the American M901, the German Raketenjagdpanzer II, hot, the Soviet Sturm S, the British Striker, the Chinese CM25, the M113 A1 Tow from Italy. And the Swedish, oh dear lord, Armored Defense Robot Bandwagon or Panzerwerns Robot Bandwagon 551. I think I did a good job there. You might ask, why do we see the Sturm S representing the Soviet tech tree and not the famous Chrysanthema? Well, here it is, actually sitting in the jury looking at all the participants and nodding in approval, since its own BR is way too high. On to the competition itself. The first stage will have the machines drive across a track full of snow, sand and marsh as quickly as possible. Let's go! The striker gains the lead, with the Soviet Sturm S following closely behind. 
the German vehicle goes third, while others lag a little. No change in the desert, although the Swedish crew loses even more time due to their low maximum speed. The snowy part of the track has the British, Soviet and German crews in the lead as well. In the marsh, the Raketenjagdpanzer manages to outrace the closest competitor. Here comes the finish, and the striker gets to it first thanks to its maximum speed. The German crew comes second, and the Sturm S finishes third. In the second stage, the crews will need to hit three ground targets two kilometers away, again, as quickly as possible. For targets, we will have a Chieftain Mark 10, an MBT 70, and a BMP 2. Ready? Steady! Go! The Sturm S is the first to handle the one target since its ATGM is the fastest among the participants. The American 901, however, is the first to destroy two targets thanks to not having to reload. Still faster is the British machine because it can launch up to five missiles in a row. The American crew is the second to report mission accomplished, and the German crew finishes third thanks to their quick reload. The Sturm S handles the task next, with other machines finishing a little later. The third stage will be similar, but instead of ground targets, we'll give them a helicopter and a plane. Let's go! The helicopter is too slow to become a problem for our ATGMs here, unlike the plane. Thanks to a proximity missile, the Soviet Sturm S is the first to destroy it. The Chinese CM-25 is the second, since its TOW-2B missile doesn't require a direct hit, either. Finally, the British striker completes the task third, with all the others showing similar performance and getting the plane down after several attempts. Ok, let's sum up. The third place goes to the American M901 for a good combination of firepower and the record elevation negative angle, up to minus 30 degrees. The second place goes to the Soviet Sturm S. Its ATGMs are the fastest, and the various missiles available to it make it easier to attack all kinds of targets. Finally, the first place goes to the British Striker. Thanks to its best top speed, you can get to important positions faster than anyone, and being able to launch five missiles without reload is extremely helpful in fighting several enemies at once. Well, now that all the missiles are spent, it's time to answer some of your questions. The first question was sent by a player called Chieftain Marksman. Is it possible to do a Cobra maneuver while using any plane or jet? Hello, Chieftain. We actually tried performing that maneuver on different planes in episode number 200. Check it out if you missed it. Star Wars Niels asks, Can you tell us more about the usage of barrage balloons? Hi, Niels. Barrage balloons were mostly used to defend cities or important objects against enemy aviation. The pilots had to be wary of colliding with the cable holding the balloons, so they couldn't go low enough to dive bomb. In War Thunder, these balloons do a great job as well. When you fly above the Normandy map, always check your flight path, or you might lose a wing. Another question comes from Mateus Margente. Can you make a tutorial for the Soviet ASU-57? Hi there, Matthias. This machine's main advantage is its extremely small size. You can hide in the most unlikely places with it. 
Add to it good mobility and a powerful gun, and you can make a splash. When you start a battle, find a place with the least open space. Take a good look around and go from cover to cover, destroying any careless enemy that comes by. If they detect you, though, you need to run. Even a machine gun will penetrate the ASU-57's armor. Luka Janzik writes, What is the best Soviet rank for plane? Hi, Luka. There are plenty of good planes at that rank in the Soviet tree. It's hard to say which one is best, but what we can do is share our own favorites. If you want a fighter, try the LA-7. It's well-balanced, with great flight performance and sufficient armament. For mixed battle, we suggest taking the Il-10, attack aircraft or the Tu-2 frontline bomber. The former is just as good as the legendary Il-2, but easier to control. The latter can carry a set of four 500-kilogram bombs, very useful against tanks. And the last comment for today was written by Thunderben21. How to use the weapon selector in aircraft. Hello, Thunderben. First, you need to go to Controls, Aircraft, Weaponry, find Fire Primary Weapons, switch Primary Weapons, and switch Secondary Weapons, and assign them to keys comfortable for you. When you're done, Head on to battle. Use the weapon selector to choose what you want to use and press the fire key. Well, that's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment. And the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to leave a like, get ready for the event, and... We'll see you next week.